Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are talking with Mina Crosby and she's going to be talking to us about her mom, her mom who opened doors for black and melanated ballerinas. You know, everybody likes their different terms. <laughs> so we are going to be learning about her mom. And I wanted to ask you, and I, I forgot to ask you before the show, how's the proper way to say your mom's first name? Sure. Um, it's Yanchi Stevenson. Yanchi Stevenson. Yes. Ah, I would have said it all wrong. I'm glad <laughs> I didn't try. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Um, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to share my book and um, to chat with you today. Yeah. So I always ask everybody this question. How are you thriving through the pandemic? I like to use the word thriving. <laughs> um, uh, I think it really speaks to <laughs> like, what we're all experiencing. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um, I was really blessed yeah. um, when yeah. everything hit in the tw in 2020 um, that, uh, uh, you know, it, circumstances happened that I was able to work from home and all the kids activities were canceled. So it was really good family time. We were blessed with health. Um, so yeah. that was, you know, it was a unique yeah. time. Um, 2021, not so much. You know, everything started yeah. Yeah, opening back up, whether it should have happened or not. Um, and so I'm, you know, back at work, yeah. kids back at school, all these things. And I and I took on a lot of projects on in the pandemic. And so now I'm doing everything plus these other projects. So it's a lot. But you know what? It's 2022 yeah. and we're going to uh, continue thriving and it's going to be a great year. Yes, yes, we, we, we're going to make it. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yes. <laughs> so tell me about your book. Sure. So I wrote a book about my mother. Um, she mm -hmm. is um, a ballerina um, who was um, had her career in the 1960s and 70s mostly. Um, she was a mm -hmm. professional ballerina um, at, based in New York. Um, although she did several, um, she worked at several companies in other places, but mainly um, she was from New York. And um, just sharing her story about the things that she faced trying to um, excel in this area that um, was not typical for African Americans, for Black people to um, right. occupy, and just the barriers that she faced, how she overcame them, and um, just, you know, just about her journey. Um, mm -hmm. I found it very inspirational. I wanted to share the story, have um, a written story that I could share with my kids, with my nieces and my nephews, um, even maybe further um, future generations, cousins, little cousins, yeah. um, little grandkids, who knows what else. <laughs> but, yeah. um, I just wanted to have a written record of it. Um, her name often comes up um, when, when talking about African Americans in yeah. ballet. And I just wanted to capture it um, in her voice in a way that she could share her story from her side. Love it. Um, you like when I was looking for uh, creating this, like the thumbnail for this, that picture that I have is the only picture I found of a little black girl in a ballerina outfit. Isn't that crazy? So that just yeah. tells you like <laughs> if it wasn't a, for pioneers like your mom. Yeah. That picture would right. be there. Yeah. Right. You know, it it just wasn't something that um, you know, there there's different sides of it. So mm -hmm. we are not we weren't brought here to excel. We weren't brought here to, you know, achieve mm -hmm. in our own right. Um yeah. and so there are different um ideas of what we can and what we cannot do and right. where we you know where what are what pockets of space we need, should occupy mm -hmm. and I, th I feel like ballet um was definitely one of those areas um that it was uh from a uniform perspective from an aesthetics it, it, it should look all one way um right. and that did not include our beautiful skin so yeah. she pushed that envelope um to allow for others to you know to go through her and many others but um she really excelled in an area that um yeah it was not common and yeah. you know people didn't really want her in some at some at some time yeah now, did you do ballet when you were younger? So did she you... made us do it, of course. So we had ballet lessons yeah. every day. Um, yeah. I was also homeschooled. So our PE was ballet yeah. and gymnastics. Me and my brothers wow. and sisters, all of us, um, we yeah. have ever had zero talent. 
Um, and <laughs> I, much to her disappointment. So, um, I, you know, I learned all the basics, but none of us really had the talent that Looking she had or it. the desire to yeah. uh, do it. So I, I learned all the, you know, I learned all the basics, but um, yeah, no, nah, it, it, it did not. It, it did we not all pass come into this all. world with our own <laughs> gifts. Yeah. yeah. We come into the world with our, that our own talent. Yeah, was it? <laughs> right. It was not. No. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's just how it is. I would like for, uh, for my daughter to get into writing, but I think she's going to be more into videos. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She you know, I love. Yeah, it, it's funny. I love reading. I love books. I love writing. Um, and, um, you know, I was hoping that I would have the same in my kids, but they are, they're doing their own different journey. They got their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. My daughter just had to, um, I couldn't figure out, I'm in college and I couldn't figure out how to do screenshot on my old, on this old computer that I use because the old computer oh, okay. is the only one I could download this system from my teacher. I okay. had to ask my nine-year-old, to rescue me so she figured out how to she wow. thought i was the boss to figure out how to do a screenshot because the screenshot wouldn't work of the screenshot button just wasn't working yeah yeah a, she had a, to a kind of, route yeah i was like I, yeah I just, they know they know we they know. Uh, there's a lot that yeah at such a young age they're in such a technology yeah you know they're born it's so that. easier for them and yeah i, I keep I'm at that age too. Me and my husband joke. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, we're at that age where we're starting to ask our, you know, kids, can you, how do you do? So, yeah. how yeah. do you do this? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, I already see this. Yeah. <laughs> I can clearly see the passion that you have for your book and your story. But so, let's dive deeper into that. Like, sure. What was the, uh, what's the driving force that made you commit to completing this book project? Yeah, so I, I, you know, I didn't start out like I'm gonna write a story about my mom. Um, it didn't start out that way. I was writing a a book. I was writing my own memoir, mm -hmm. and um, you know, sent it out for feedback for some for beta readers, and they were like, oh, you know, you have two different stories here. You have your story, which is unique in its own way, and then you have your mom's story. It would be great to tell the, you know, share your mom's legacy. Um, and so that kind of got me. You know, I was like, okay, I could do this, and. Um, started talking to my dad and my dad was like, no, you really have something here. You really should write this. And he started giving me pointers and tips because he had um, been in the self-publishing business for a while. And, wow. um, and I, then I started doing research and like pulling up newspaper articles and just kind of getting, just really getting the depth of her story. And it was just, it was just fascinating because I, I feel like I would learn something new every um, you know, wow. every time I came across something, I'd be like, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. And then I'd ask my mom and she'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, that's amazing. And she'd be like, oh, yeah, that happened. And I was like, OK. <laughs> um, so she yeah, it was, it was just she was just so humble about it. And so like, oh, I guess that's important to some people. Yeah. Um, so that was yeah, that was really great to um, uncover those stories and just um, understand like her life in a different way and get to know her, um, right. you know, and her experiences and just, just to see what's out there. So that was really great. Um, yeah. And then it just kind of, um, you know, we wrote the book and then um, sending, sending that information out to the world and hopefully sharing it with everybody is also great. I love that your dad is a, is, is a, a veteran in self in the self publishing industry, that really does help because a lot of times when uh, other authors say, "Oh, I want to write a book," the people closest to them are giving this discouraging them. They're like, "Oh, you know, what's the point in that? It makes no sense. You think yep. you're gonna, you know." So I love that your dad, you know, he, he said the right words to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right you know, thing. and it was, yeah, it was a very, it was very special. Like he, um, he, you know, he loved, he loved writing um, mm -hmm. and he was very, he was very excited about it, very passionate about it. And he actually passed before I published it. Um, oh. So it just, it was a great um memory I have those yeah. memories like he would he got really so excited he would call me every day about it um, wow. which is something he never did and he it, yeah. it, it just it was great that I was able to share that with him in, yeah. in his last um in his last years of in his yeah. life and just have those memories also as a special um special touch for me um yeah. getting the book out yeah oh I love that that's great I mean I'm sorry that your father passed away 
but I, that's Thank wonderful. You. Yeah, that is wonderful. Yeah, um, he really, I mean, he really coached me through it. And that's sort of one thing that I really like to kind of pay it forward. Um, you know, people have asked me questions about how do I publish things? And I was like, you know, I can, I can, I want to share that knowledge too, because mm -hmm. um, he shared it with good. me. So kind of paying it forward. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Hopefully my kids will say that about me. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 um, my daughter's here. <laughs> so I want to talk about the racism your mother faced. And uh, yeah, through her career. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, 19, think about 1960s, 1970s. Um, so mm -hmm. um, a lot, you know, America in itself was going through a lot of turmoil um, and yeah. she was trying to occupy a space that, you know, that there wasn't mm -hmm. many. Um, there were a few, but there wasn't many that were exceeding at the level that she wanted. She wanted to be um, a principal ballerina in a major company. That was her goal. Um, wow. And so she had to push through that, through, um, you know, the aspects of they, you know, ballet is very technical. You know, it takes a lot yes. of training and skill to get those movements correct. Um, and a lot of ideas that a African-Americans couldn't excel in that way um mm -hmm. or that they shouldn't or mm -hmm. and then there was the idea of um you know just from the aesthetics perspective of it we want um uniform look like all the ballerinas to look exactly the same yeah. and you know it, she would stand out just in her color um mm -hmm. and so she had to you know experience those um as she was trying to excel um she experienced all of that um mm -hmm. and so it was it just kind of sort of continued to manifest um until she um you know found the company that she um ended up retiring from which was the dance theater of harlem which actually mm. celebrated um the blackness and celebrated wow. her culture and everything like that so she kind of felt yeah. she kind of came home to it she was able to be in a place where everything about me is celebrated versus it right. being a barrier um right. so that kind of was the trajectory of her uh, sort of her wow. career Wow. And then, you know, one thing I, I wanted to talk about also is um, you said with the the skin tights, the um, the tights that ballerinas wear. Your yeah. Mom, yeah. Yeah. She was. a. Uh... Yeah. So she kind of pioneered. Um, she was at the, the Dance Center of Harlem at the time and mm -hmm. uh, founder Arthur Mitchell. Um, they kind of um, she presented um, one day wearing skin color tights, so tights that matched her beautiful skin, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the pink um, tip that was typically worn at the time. Uh -huh. um, and so it just it was there was something about it that really made it her stand out, and mm -hmm. um, it was very noticeable how the uniformity um, mm -hmm. changed the look of the whole dancer. Um, and wow. instead of seeing one color on top and one color on the bottom, it was yeah. graceful lines all the way through from top nice. to bottom. And it's just a celebration of, you know, our skin color. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, she started doing that and then it, um, so she's kind of credited as the, um, the, one of the pioneers of this kind of aesthetic. Um, yeah. that, and, and, and starting to see it, and pockets of places where now when you see uh, African-American ballerina, mm -hmm. they um, uh, like in commercials, like Amazon did a commercial a while ago and, you know, she was practicing and practicing mm -hmm. in those skin colored in the, you know, the pink tights. But when she was doing the performance, yeah. she put on the, you know, the, the tights that match her skin. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a, um, a statement. Um, and mm -hmm. um, I think something that my mom is really proud of that she um, pioneered that and that, um, you know, every time she sees it, she gets excited when she sees other dancers uh, embracing their skin color that way and having that yeah. aesthetic. Yeah, that's a good, that's a beautiful thing. I, um, I recently learned, I recently heard about the, the tights um, a little bit before we talked. And so I, I was like, that's, that's about it. <laughs> about time yeah, um, yeah. so what and sacrifices still did one. your mother make oh sorry 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 oh no go ahead go ahead <laughs> sorry i know that okay <laughs> so what others what sacrifices did your mother make for her career you know we talked about some of them yeah you know i and i don't know if the word sacrifice really applies Mm -hmm. She was passionate about what she wanted to do. She knew 
that she had the talent. She knew what she what her goals were. And mm -hmm. so she sort of diminished everything else that kind of stood in her way. So mm -hmm. when I think when you one of the lessons that I learned from her life is like when you when you have that drive and when you have that desire, you magnify your focus. And so yeah. other things might you might you know, not pay attention or you might put less of focus on other things, but is that, is mm. that really a sacrifice or are you just really um, focused on your work? And so I feel like yeah. that is kind of what her life story is, showed me is that I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know if she would necessarily say she sacrificed anything. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there was, you know, she gave her body, she gave her time, she gave all of that stuff, but it was with something that she loved and uh, yeah. a passion of hers. And she wanted to pursue it in the highest and the most excellent way. And right. so she, that was her focus. And um, she was able to do that um, having that narrow focus. So I don't know if, I don't know if she would look at it as a sacrifice. I yeah. think she would look at it as focus. Focus. I like that. I like that. It is. It is focus. You got to have, it's, I, I guess, yeah, we do kind of put it in a negative kind of way when we say it that way. Yeah. So what future writing projects? So you have your memoir that you're working on. That's there. So I, I, I'm, I, you know, I need to work on it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. So this, uh, is, this is about like what it's like, your perspective from growing up with a famous mom, the ballerina. Is it from you know, that point not, of view? No, not really. Because she... Um, you know, her life sort of pivoted. Um, she retired, mm -hmm. and then she went on to be passionate and focused on, on other things. Um, but we were homeschooled um, mm -hmm. in a time where that was not common at all. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so it just kind of it talks about you know just growing up black Muslim and homeschooled, mm -hmm. very unique. Um, yeah. Not not atypical. Um, so it just kind of shares my experiences of. Um, my you know what that was like yeah <laughs> and, yeah um how i survived no i don't know how i thrived in that let's use that word that's right <laughs> in that in that environment so that's the book i am trying to write um and uh at this point i need to you know put some more chapters in and just put some work in it but um i'm really enjoying um sharing my mom's story Mm -hmm. I'm really focused on, I'm an editor as well. So I have a lot of editing okay. projects I'm working on now. And so yeah. um, I need to get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> but right yeah. now it's kind of uh, it's just chill, sitting on the shelf waiting for me to get back to it. Well, you know, um, I, yeah, editing, I'm now starting to get into editing, but for myself. And um, I'm still going to, I've been researching a lot of different techniques that other people use. Uh, and this one lady brought up a really, really good point. She said that her first book, she wrote it and then she sent it to the editor. And it, yeah, it got edited and everything, but it still had a lot of, it still had some mistakes. And she oh. realized it was because she says, before you send your book off to the editor, you need to self-edit. And the way she self-edits is aggressive. She, she, um, she reads it. She reads it through Dragon, like, you know, let's it go through Dragon, let Dragon read it um, to pick up any mistakes. She puts it through Grammarly. She puts it through another um, editing site like Grammarly. Hmm, okay. She does this about like seven or eight times. And nice. then before she even sent it to the editor. And she says what happens is what she's noticed is now the editor is actually able to really do their job. She goes, they're no longer editing the mistakes that you could have caught. So you caught everything right. up to your level yes. of knowledge and what you have access to and now the editor really take things for what they went to school for like what they learned how to edit and i was like i never thought about it that way yeah. <laughs> i was like here i threw up on paper you fix it <laughs> yeah and you know there's yeah you i mean it's, it yeah i agree <laughs> you know I, I i understand it's um you want to make sure you know that you're you know, doing your due diligence. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, I, so yeah. So editing is something in the, and revision and I'm writing about, you know, cause my first book, I wrote that like almost 10 years ago. So mm, I've okay. come a long way as a writer. So now I got to right. look back to my early writing and it's starting to sound like kindergarten words to me. 
So I'm like, yeah, yeah I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna revise it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Great business. laughs> so that's you know, so yeah, the editing thing, I'm 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 starting to I don't think I'll ever edit for somebody else. I think it's just for myself because I'm still gonna send mine off to an editor. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yep. Yeah. And so, I I I always say I you know, I send my my books to editors too. I mean it's hard to really edit your own. Yeah. Um, writing because you know yeah. it, it sounds you know what you're trying to say um, yes. but when somebody else looks at it they don't know what you're trying That's to it. say and it, you, mm -hmm. you make it makes sure that it's saying what you are trying to say <laughs> and that's that's the other thing like i've learned that you our, our eyes auto correct so just like you're saying is it's, it's exactly right like i know what i was trying to say so it did right yeah and then their eyes are going to pick it up because you know it's just fresh eyes on it. So yep, exactly. I've heard of um, yep. editors, yeah, like they'll put the work away for two weeks and then bring it out and edit it again. And I've heard of other editors, they, they, they edit it from the back of the book first, like the last chapter on up so that they don't get caught up in the story. And then they'll, at the end, they'll read through the story. I was like, this is, it's tedious, but it's interesting. It <laughs> so is. I love it. I I really, yeah, I love, because I feel like it mixes, I love reading and I love writing. Yeah. And so it yeah. mixes both of those together and I, it helps, I can be creative. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I love, I love it. <laughs> so you had, I remember you were telling me, let me, let me, let me make sure I, I got this right. There were some stories you were telling me about with the things that your mom had experienced with the civil rights. Was she a part of the civil rights or, or no? No, I mean, I wouldn't say, I mean, you know, you were black at the time. Um, so, you you know, there was, she was, she was in, in it. She was experiencing, um, you know, what everything was going on. I wouldn't say she was in the, she, you know, she wasn't on the front lines of the movement. I wouldn't say that. Right. Um, but, you know, she definitely um, wanted, um, she she definitely became aware um, and was knowledgeable and just through her own experiences of what, um, you know, what was going on. Um, she wasn't insulated in any kind of way because she was in, you know, spaces, um, white spaces, if you want to say. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, and, oftentimes, you know, experienced things firsthand um, about what was going on. Um, and so that was, you know, that also just was a part of her journey, um, yeah. trying to navigate that. Did she ever feel like she wanted to give up when she, like, any you know, time in her career? I don't think so. Um, from, um, from what I can tell and from what I know of her, um, it was, it was kind of like, this is, the God-given talents that I have. I have the talent, mm -hmm. I have the drive, the motivation. Why would I give up, right? right. Um, what would there, what, what reason would I have to not, I might have to pivot. I might have to find, you know, um, ways to do things a different way. Right. But she, um, she followed her heart and that led her to this amazing career. And then, you know, when her faith and her, her heart told her that it was time to do something else, you know, she, you know, kind of, you know, retired, I wouldn't say, yeah. um, some say, you know, she gave it up, or she, you know, she quit. Um, but she, you know, she made that choice to retire um, from performing and kept ballet in her life in a, in a different way. Um, right. And so I think that's kind of uh, one another lesson that I take from her life, um, you know, is pursue something, follow your heart, um, until your heart tells you something different. And, um, right. and so that's, that's kind of what her story is. Um, you know, she had a, you know, she spent her whole time homeschooling, um, six kids and, um, mm -hmm. wow. And then moved on to, you know, I, yeah, just wow in that. Right. <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. um, she, uh, also went and, um, you know, had another, had another career per se. Um, she mm -hmm. works in a school. So, um, I don't, you know, I think there was, you know, her life, you know, as life happens, it takes different trajectories, but I think what I love about her is she's followed, she stayed true to herself and has followed yeah. her heart and listened to that and let that, her faith guide her um, to, right. you know, what, what made sense to her. Right. Your, your mom seems amazing. It seems like she's somebody that um, you can really look to the, how to handle problems gracefully, you know, um, 
yeah, I, I don't know why I get that off of her. Like you could really <laughs> learn yeah, how I mean, to her, move through some problems gracefully. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, it's just um, it's just it's very inspirational. I think that, and that's another reason why I wanted to write it. I wanted to share her story. You know, she wasn't. Um, you know, she, she didn't like cure cancer. Um, you know, she didn't do anything major. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like that, but she had an impact in a niche community, which I think is important. And then she also, you know, was inspirational. Um, and she also pivoted um, when she, when her faith called her to do something else. Um, and I think there's, mm. just, there's lessons in just, you know, dealing like le living life that way um, that mm -hmm. I, I was inspired by and I wanted to share with others. Right. I love that. I love that. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to play a commercial and then we'll be right back. Okay. If I can find, Thank you. If I can find a commercial. <laughs> we live in a world that glorifies wickedness. It's so easy to be bad. It's easy to make excuses for poor behavior as if no one is watching. But what if someone is watching? What if not just someone, but a whole invisible world of people, of judges watching and observing? And they were able to see the destruction of our future based on our actions, our choices, would we continue to make the same poor choices if they were used against us? May Gordon has been violated repeatedly by our world, but through the eyes of the unseen, she is a hero. Despite all that is thrown at her, she never allows negative energy to remold her into its liking. She remains indestructible. Okay, and we're back with Mina Crosby, author Mina Crosby. <laughs> so tell me, would you give someone who finds that they might be a pioneer in their field of interest? Yes. Yeah, so I think um, one of the things that my mom had is she had tremendous support. Um, mm -hmm. So as she was facing these obstacles, her parents, especially my grandfather, was in her corner. Um, other parents might be like, this is ballet. What are you doing? You know, you know, focus yeah. on your studies. You know, you need to go to college and become a whatever. Uh, but he was like, nope, you're this. You're going to be ex you're going to be excellent in this. I'm going to be in your corner. I'm going to advocate for you on any, many different levels. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really important. She also was a part of a wonderful dance studio, um, the Bernice Johnson Dance Studio, which was, was mm -hmm. run by a wonderful African American businesswoman. Um, and that company rallied around her, supported her. Gave mm -hmm. um, she worked there. It's just a tremendous um, support for her as well, um, yeah. as well as you know, others that, you know, she met in the field, um, you know, when she had kind of decided to go work with um, Alvin Ailey, he, he still encouraged her, you know, you need to pursue being a ballerina. Um, and so mm -hmm. she had all of this um, community around her pushing her forward. And so right. that's what I would tell anyone, if they're trying to break barriers, they're trying to be the first of something, is to find that community. I think it's easier with social media, Mm -hmm. um, you to find those niche communities that it wasn't before, but find the group of people, whether it's your family, whether it's outside of your family, where it's, you know, any random strangers on the internet right. that will really speak life into you and into your goals will encourage you when days seem hard, when you want to give up, find that, find that space. Um, and you will get energy from it and it'll push you forward. Um, yeah. And so I, I, I do like social media that way. I know there's some negative parts of about, um, all of yeah. it, but, um, you know, all the, you know, trolls and, comments yeah. and everything like that, yeah. but you can really find a niche community that really supports you and you can find others that are doing similar things who are also striving for the same goals that can like, you know, cheer you on. So yeah. that's what I would tell anybody. You have to find that support. You have to find that community, um, to push you forward in the days that you don't want to. Right. Right. I love that. 
That is actually really good advice. <laughs> That's really good advice. So I want to talk, um, we, we, we actually moved through this pretty quickly, <laughs> but you know, we got time. So I, I want to be talk more chatty. More. I know, let's chat more. <laughs> <laughs> so what were your struggles when it comes to writing, like it's for me, it's easy for me to write fiction, but when it comes to writing someone else's story, how, you know, it's, what were the challenges that you faced writing someone else's story, even though it's your mom, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, with fiction, you can kind of, you know, use your yeah. imagination yeah. and be very, very creative Yeah. with nonfiction and especially writing something like a biography, you know, you need to get your facts straight. Um, yes. I did the first draft and I sent it to mom and she fact checked me. She was like, that did not happen. That's not true. You need to say this. So, wow. um, yeah. So I think that's, that's kind of what the challenge is. Um, what I drew on was just a lot of research. So I looked for mm -hmm. newspaper articles, magazines, any PhD dissertations, um, mm -hmm. Any of that, anything that I could pull that had her name in it, I, I, I tried mm -hmm. to find it. Um, and mm -hmm. then that really gave me an, a sense of timeline and a sense of like um, all the things that she was doing. There right. was a lot that I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I knew that happened, but I couldn't find mm -hmm. sources for it. So I couldn't put it in, um, but just, I had to find those, um, just, you know, her life. Um, yeah. And so that was the, I think that was one of the most challenging parts of it because I would like do go on this deep dive research and find like, oh, this happened. And then I'd be like, mom, is this, this happened? She's like, oh yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't just know that. So yeah. pulling, pulling the information from her was difficult. I think, yeah. um, you know, in a sense, um, it's a it's another another life that she lived a yeah. long time ago. And so yeah. some of the things that I find amazing, she was like, oh, that just happened. I didn't think you'd be interested in that. So that was kind <laughs> of what <laughs> that was kind of a little bit of a challenge yeah. just to get her to um, just to get those stories out because they were there. I just have to find them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, it was just fascinating. So um, that is kind of I think if you're doing um, nonfiction that's mm -hmm. one of the main things biography is just research so i spent a yeah. lot of time um re doing research on my mother um pulling up anything and she went by different names so that was not that was another thing that was wow. you know she had a name you know she had her, her name and then she had a stage name and so some articles have that's her right. own name some had her stage name and so okay. um yeah it was it was uh it was a lot but i also talked to her um I talked to family members, so like her cousins mm -hmm. and uncle, um, cousins, um, to also get a perspective. Her best friends, just okay. to kind of see those people that I could talk to, um, yeah. and also get gain more insight. So I think that really was um, the hardest. That it was a challenge. I think if I do another yeah. book, um, I would definitely find someone who's a little more chatty, <laughs> who <laughs> runs the brag and post and share yeah. everything live, yeah. you know. Um, and, uh, go from there. So, yeah, your, your mom's like, yeah, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, it's just, no it's not, <laughs> it's not yeah. to her. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah I get, I can get that. I, I've, I've come across that with my grandma. My grandma, my grandmother was actually, um, my grandmother's from, well, she's not from, she's from St. Vincent, but she moved oh, okay. to the island of Trinidad when she was five. Okay, and yeah, she yeah. told me that when she was she was born, she was born into slavery, and she would say, "Hey, it's so nonchalant." And I'm like, uh, "Grandma, yeah, like <laughs> so no, like yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. like oh, that just happened. That's no." And you're like, "No, yeah. that's and these, yeah. yeah, these are the stories that like I, I, I'm also that's another thing I'm really passionate about is like." getting these stories and recording them and um, right. documenting them. Right. Because right. like you said, you know, some of these things that happened to them, the lives that they lived, yeah. just, it just kind of was their life. Right. But yeah, yeah, for yeah. us, you know, it's like, wow, like that really happened. Like, That's really how it, really, it was. Yeah. It really put things in, because, you know, you know, in school you hear the stories and, and everything. Um, but it's different when your grandma says, yeah, yeah, I was born to slavery. And then, and then she'll say things like, yeah, she goes, we, uh, we were in the house. We, we worked in the house. My grandmother was very fair skinned like me, very, very mm -hmm. fair skinned. So I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. <laughs> you know? 
uh, yeah. <laughs> you got, you know. Yep, but yep. she she would help me, and that's why I say like it's good. The next magazine we're working on, it just might as well leads into this. But the next magazine we're working on, we we want to collect these stories because um, just as another lady that I was speaking with, uh, another author, Miss Judy Hewitt, she she's from Trinidad also. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me, well, it makes sense um, when slavery ended in slavery ended uh, earlier in Trinidad than it did St. Vincent. So when slavery ended in St. Vincent, a lot because my grandmother left there when she was five, right, moved yeah. to Trinidad. And I was like, that uh, is, and what I said, this is what I'm talking about. Like when we come together and we start talking about these stories, you can actually piece together history. And right. to me, that's more yeah. accurate. Yeah, that's more accurate than yeah. one person sitting there telling me how they think it went. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it, and the, and you putting putting those different pieces together, um, and especially mm -hmm. in the backdrop of like history, like knowing like what happened, yeah. you're just like, oh, that's yeah. you know, it just connect. You connect the dots that way. Um, yeah. One of my goals was to visit um, is to visit all the islands that my um, my wow. parents and grandparents are from. Um, and so, yeah, Ooh. when I when I've gone places and I've I've seen different things, I'm just like, OK, then that makes more sense. Now I understand yeah. the context of this when I see the part of um, Aruba that my mom lived in or um, when I went to Cuba. Your mom and saw, was from like, Aruba? Like, yeah, so my mom was born in Aruba. Okay, she was born. Okay, my grandmother had family in Aruba because she would still go oh, okay. visit. Yeah, up until she yeah. she passed away now, but you know, oh, like yeah, she would still go and visit every couple of years. She'd go visit her family in Aruba. So yeah, yeah that's where I was so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really yeah. great. Uh, it's been so. so have you you visited Aruba? Yeah, so um, I have, so I have, I have, no, I have four, um, so my family's from four different islands. Um, my, on my okay. mother's side, they're from Trinidad, actually. Um, and then they went to Aruba, oh, wow. um, and then they came to the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, need to do, go to Trinidad, Aruba, and then on my dad's side, um, my grandmother was um, Jamaican, um, and my, um, uh, and also Cuban. Um, and she came to the United mm. States from Cuba. So I was like, okay, I need to go to Jamaica and wow. Cuba. So I've done um, Trinidad is <laughs> the only one I need to get to. I've done the other three. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got well, I mean, now with the COVID and everything, the, oh, my gosh, it used to be the best time to go was Carnival. But yeah. now with COVID, it's so it's so different. It's so different. It's I'm hoping this maybe in a couple of years when this clears up or we figure this out and we get ourselves together that things can open back up without it being dangerous for anybody. But yeah, I, right, yeah. I went to Trinidad once, <laughs> once I and um, I loved it. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. The best thing to do is eat. <laughs> of course. The best course. food. Oh my gosh. The best food. Uh, yeah. I cannot no, wait. Yes. Eat, eat. Uh, yeah. That's my yeah. thing. <laughs> I miss the foods. And where I live, it's kind of hard to find like good Trini food. I grew up in South Florida, though, so there is it's a huge West Indian community. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, but here not so much. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's one of the things we have. We have a good one good uh, one good restaurant by our house that we go to a lot. Um, that's just oh uh, really. But yeah, but here I live in Arizona, so okay, okay, slim pickings for sure. Um, but we found we yeah. found a few. Um, you know, oh, that's good. Places that we like to go to that's often, good. but it's not, you know, I'm from DC, Maryland area, so it's definitely, definitely not that. Did you did you um ever grow up? I don't. Well, I know your mom moved to Aruba, but did there was there any kind of West Indian sayings your mom would say <laughs> like when she's mad at you, the kids? Or... <laughs> you know, so she came over here when she was six. So um, okay. you know, I. So it, it kind of, so not really. Um, yeah. And we didn't, we lived, they, my grandmother lived in New York. Uh, we lived mm -hmm. in Maryland. Um, so it's not like she was, you know, um, that constant yeah. grandmother we saw every day. So, yeah. um, so not, not really, um, um, which is why I really enjoy trying to connect back with that and visiting those, yeah. just kind of get to get that, get that I history like, a little bit. Yeah. The islands that they 
have the funniest sayings, just the weirdest things. I have an aunt, like, instead of you just, just instead of just saying no, now this is just her personal, it's not a Trini thing, but instead of her just telling you a simple no to a question, she would ask you, when did you see an aunt's belly? And it's, yeah, wow. that's pretty, yeah, okay. <laughs> See, there's there's no answer to that. You just you're like, okay, no. uh, let me okay, let me go on my away. business. <laughs> yeah, just walk away. <laughs> yeah, but I just feel like I don't know. I feel island people have the funniest, like just the funniest sayings, you know, all over the islands. It's it's hilarious. Yeah, but, it's definitely um, a, a unique culture. Um, yeah, I, I that I enjoy a lot. Um, I see myself retiring in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I don't, my yeah. husband, not so much. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I was like, this is my dream. Let me, yeah. let, let me dream my dream. Um, you know, just, it, I just would love to be in an environment where it's just, I feel more celebrated yeah. than yeah. where I am yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, I don't know, like this country, I don't know if, it looks like we're going backwards or I, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's, it's really crazy. The things that are happening, the things that I read about every day, it's just like common sense is rare, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then just, it's just, it's sad. All the things that yeah. are going on, it's, it's yeah. very, very sad. And, so. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm sure, you know, there's no perfect place. Um, right. Yeah. So every private place has their problems and their, their solutions. Yeah. But I think just, um, you know, in the couple of times that I have stepped outside of, um, you know, just my where I live um, and visited yeah. other countries, um, there's just a an ease about them, and and sort of yeah. that I feel like that my skin is not um, coming with a, a bunch of assumptions because obviously yeah. I'm a Muslim, I'm black, I'm female, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a lot going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, you know, it just in my daily walk, you know, just in my daily yeah. life, especially living in Arizona of all places, yeah. Um, yeah. that you know that you know that you feel the microaggressions that you just yeah. you know you just they're just part of your daily life, um, and so uh, just being when I had stepped, I actually went to Jamaica. Um, Ooh. in July of this of last really? year I guess now yeah and um it's just so peaceful like yeah it's just you know you know just yeah okay yeah there there laid she back. is doing whatever doing what she's doing you know very laid back just going yeah by. yeah and I was yeah. just like oh, I love this I love this for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very laid back yeah I have I have a lot of friends from Jamaica surprisingly I don't have any family from Jamaica but I have a lot of friends from Jamaica. Most of my family is from Trinidad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the bulk of my family is from Trinidad. Um, at least on my mom's side. So <laughs> but yeah, I I love it. Um, it is peaceful and it is nice. It's there's something comforting. I know they did a a, a, a a this report had came out why a lot of um African men African American men and women are fine with leaving the workplace and working from home. And it said the one thing they don't have to deal with is the microaggression, yep. the, the 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 Karens at their workplace. They don't, they, you yep. know, like they're they are a lot easier for them to work and focus from home. And right. I feel like if companies don't kind of wake up, and um, like right now it's it's with this with the viruses is one thing, but then it the viruses kind of highlighted a lot of issues, and some of which we thought weren't an issue anymore right but yes. yeah yep. this ugly beast called racism is alive and, and, and alive and well, well unfortunately yeah. yeah yeah and i and i think you know one of the things i really admire um about i guess millennials and you know the mm -hmm. younger generation oh, yeah. i feel so old saying that <laughs> i'm not that old <laughs> i promise but uh you know, I think that they are really understanding, you know, their worth and understanding I don't have to take these, you yes. know, I don't have to take this, especially, you know, like yeah. the whole situation yeah. with COVID, like, um, you know, the whole great resignation, people are just saying, no, nah, I'm not, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to put up with X, Y, Z. Um, and I, and I think yeah. that's, it's just, there's, you know, there's powerful, there's powerful because there's a lot that yeah. happens that shouldn't happen. Um, I'm you know, yeah. blessed to work in a space um, 
that is um, that is very um, accepting of who I am. So I like that. I love that. Um, but you know, it's it's yeah. hard out there in corporate yeah. America, and um, you know, I love seeing um, entrepreneurial efforts. I love seeing people that are trying to do different things, and you know, you know, trying to keep the wealth in the community. That's right. We got into with, with Panda Magazine. I try to. I try to get it on subjects that people don't really aren't really talking about. Our mm-hmm. last one was actually about um, a lot of people don't know this that uh, Native Native American men are actually being murdered at a higher rate than African American men, and no nobody knew this. The other reason wow. why a lot of people don't know this is because well, two reasons is like they know that the numbers are higher, but they don't have an exact count. But just the just their estimate is higher already. And right. the reason why they don't have an wow. exact count is because one, they're not really keeping a, an accurate record, and then the other two is kind of their fault, but not not indir- not directly their fault, but indirectly their fault is all the tribes are you know are kind of separated, and so you'd have to like go to each tribe to find out you know how many people were murdered by the cops this year, you know, and right. yeah, because they operate in their own sovereign nations, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, they're all sovereign, yeah. So we got like 574 recognized tribes. So federally recognized tribes. And um, and then there's also state tribes. So nobody has like a real accurate number. And um, in, the, in one of my books, I wanted to list, you know, I wanted to do a, a, a kind of like a, a remembrance to African-Americans, Native Americans and Hispanic Americans that were murdered by police. And unfortunately, I can't because I can get uh, the thing with uh, the African African American community is we've been dealing with this since the, yeah. When you think about it, we've been dealing with this since the police was formed. Right. Um, yep. So we're Native Americans. <laughs> yeah. So we're Native Americans. You know, it comes Hispanic Americans, but I can get more of a closer number with African Americans and names. But with the Native Americans, I couldn't. And I'm, I'm about all trying to be fair across the board. Right. So if I can't get the amount of names I need for one. No, no, it's fine. Oh, there, this is nothing. I had one show I did and it was one of my favorite shows. And our internet, her, uh, I think her, her, her internet kept dropping, where she'd completely leave and have to call back in. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! It was when I loved it. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah. yeah, it was a great show. We, you know what? What I say is like with everything, you just you overcome it. So Bro, you yeah, just, the you show must punches. go on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just kept going. <laughs> well, tell everybody where can they buy your book. Yeah, so my book is available um, in um, online retailers, um, including Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, um, and a couple of others. So anywhere you buy books um, online, you should be able to find it. Um, and okay. um, also, you can check out my website; it has the different uh, locations. So minacrosby.com um, also has um, where um, it can be purchased. Okay. Okay, nice. And what are the best ways for fans to support you, for people to support you? Other than buying your book, what are the, as an author, what are the best ways for someone to support you? Um, you know, I'm going to broaden that out to um, being an editor because I, I, it's, I mean, I'm an author, but I feel like I'm an editor first, um, yeah. in a sense. So um, I would um, want to make sure that everybody writes um, and shares yeah. their story because I think that's yes. really important just um, I think we need more authors in the world that are telling different stories um, yeah. and then I would I would ask people to read so not just my book but um, read yes. independent art um, authors um, self-published yeah. authors there's a lot of great content that uh, is put out there and obviously we don't have the marketing powerhouses that other um, the big five companies do but um, there's, there's some really great yeah. um, things so support your friends that are authors 
um, support um, independent authors and tell your story. And if you need a great author, I'm an editor. Yes. You can come find me <laughs> um, and check me out on my website. Um, but yeah, I would just think um, encourage people to write, encourage people to get editors. <laughs> and uh, no, but in all seriousness, I do think we yes. just need to yes. tell our story. Um, and I'd encourage anyone to write, even if it's mm -hmm. just yourself mm -hmm. journaling, whatever. Is there there's something really yeah. therapeutic and important about the writing process? So I would say um, right. do that no matter and do it for yourself. And then if you want to share it with others, that's great. But um, that and so in a way, as as you're writing, as you're purchasing independent books, you're elevating the whole community of writers that I'm a part of. Um, and so I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great, and that is very very true. And um, the literacy, we, I really we really need to start reading more. I, they said that the average American reads at the sixth to eighth grade level, and I was like, that yeah. that got me to start reading more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. No, 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 no. That's not. Good. And when you that is not good. when you read, your I mean, it just your your knowledge expands. Your writing improves. You get introduced yes. to new, to more yes. concepts and words and different, um, techniques. different ways. Yeah. To, yeah. I, I, so I'm a I'm a big yeah. fan of of it all. So um, I I just I always highly encourage it. Last question. What? Uh, how should I put? I wrote it down. How is the author challenge going for you? Like, how? What are your input about the author challenge <laughs> yeah you know what so um so i have when i read i like to read the same thing so i like nonfiction memoirs yeah. and biographies that's like my go-to um and so what i like yeah. about this is it's in introducing me to new genres and new um right. uh, areas that i would not typically look to um, yeah. you know, you just did an interview with Sherry and her book and that's, you know, I'm not into horror movies or un yeah. none of that, but just I hearing her talk I, about yeah. it, I was like, oh, this yeah. is interesting. Okay. Um, so yes. that's, that's, I think, yeah. that, I think that's my favorite part about it. I'm just, I'm just getting to know yeah. so many different other things that I wouldn't, um, have, I wouldn't have thought to like look into my, yes. you know, on my own. I agree. Cause I, I don't watch horror movies, but now I, well, I'm going to be buying her book. But it's like I never looked at it that way. Like she just opened up a whole new world to yeah. it. So I was like, I think I want and the to way she was Predator. talking about yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh wow, okay, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so passionate about it. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. And I, you know, and like I was telling her something to talk about off the air that this would be great for academics, like um to get into colleges, you know, for creative yeah. writing or just writing in general. Yeah. So that's what, and that's what I love about this is I'm getting to meet you guys. And I mean, I hate to say this, shameful to say, I probably would have never spoken to you, never known about you or your book had I not did this, you know, so right, or, yeah. or been a part of this. So I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, no, this is. And then what I get, to, you know, like we're so busy in the world and so bombarded that we don't stop to take time to really. See, now with this, when I go and I have to do this interview, I have to go look into your book. I have to go investigate. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, it, yeah. You know, when you tell me about your mom, I was like, what? I would, I would, I'm not into ballet. I'm not into, well, you know, I'm not, it's right. not, yeah. yeah so I yeah. would never think to look that way, but now, so right. I, I, my dream is to have a library full of self-published authors like oh, just just at least that. one book you know yeah just one book from each author and i know there's enough on my facebook page i should <laughs> i should have enough <laughs> right there yeah but there's i just so, many that, there's so much and i feel yeah. like self-published authors they write they do write some good books it's just sometimes they just need guidance they need good editors they just need a good support team that's it. Yep. They right. just need yep. a good support yep. team and they yep. would excel because the story, like, um, what was it? Uh, urban fiction is really, really good. People right. don't understand and people are kind of missing out on it. And I know they, you know, they talk about, you know, the other shows or whatever, but the stories are interesting. Like, and the way it's written, you can, you can feel the, the author's heart 
in that book. Yep. Yep. So there's all these different genres and different themes and people to mm-hmm. put their own life stories in there in fictional ways. And I just think it's beautiful. So I, I love supporting it. And I love, I love like I'm getting to meet all these different authors. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is fun. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm very grateful that you um, thought of this idea and um, you oh, know invited you. us. Oh, that was in. God. This is yeah, really that great. was God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all God because it's just I don't know. I was just thinking about Susu one day, and I'm like, why don't we do a book Susu? That had to be God. That wasn't me. <laughs> but <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like, that well, Susu. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, this is, yeah, this, this is a great project. So I'm happy awesome. to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, I'm, I thank you for being on tonight and I hope you have a wonderful evening. May you get all the rest that you need to deal with tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for being on and I will keep you posted on what we're going to be doing next. Okay. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Have a wait. Have a great day. <laughs> great Thanks, night. Thanks. You too. Bye. Right, bye. Bye.